Hello, Cecil County in the world again. Rob Turnside for Cecil TV in the studio with the man, the myth, the legend. He's too young to be walking history, but he's a history uh, professor at Cecil College, teaches U.S. history, African-American history, Maryland history, and whatever they ask him to teach because he knows about it. Mike Whatever Dixon. they ask, Rob, yes, sir. Welcome to Cecil TV Thanks again. Thanks for having me back. A regular guest. Thanks. I know there's lots we're going to talk about tonight. Lots we could talk about. We could talk about some of your latest projects. Mm -hmm. You continue to teach at the college, right? Hartford Community, yeah. Oh, Hartford Community. Yeah. yeah. Did I say Cecil? You did. You, Hartford, that's what I meant. Yeah. The other Cecil. The one on the other side of the bridge. The other side of the bridge. My bad. Yeah. So, and we were talking earlier, you do actually do walking around with your students and yeah. check things out. Well, you know, Rob, um, when, you, when you teach a variety of history courses, especially in an area like this, there is just so much history. It's, you know, like all around us. Right. And, and what a way to engage 18, 19, 20-year-olds, but take them into Havity Grace or Chesapeake City or Northeast or something like that. So, yeah, I, I kind of call it like our history lab. We get out of the classroom and we go right. walk around and take tours. You'll have to come with us someday. I would love to do that. We'd love to be glad to have you. I would love to do that because I know I'll learn something. Yeah. I always do every time you're on. Thanks. So... You, one of your latest projects you were telling me earlier as we were talking about is has something to do about the, the African-American school in Cecilton? Right. Uh, so earlier this year, uh, they demolished the African-American schoolhouse in Cecilton. It was the uh, Bishop, Bishop Levi Coppin School. So the community down there came together and uh, uh, the alumni decided they'd like to do an oral history project. So. Uh, we stopped down. Actually, this was uh, my son's project, Kyle, and I was just helping him with it more so than anything. And he was working with Renee Henry, somebody from the community. And, and Rob, it was fascinating to see, I don't know, 20, 30 people come together who had gone to that school. Just as it's getting ready to be raised to meet the wrecking ball, they come in and they're describing 30, 40 years of memories of an old schoolhouse that had served that, served, uh, that town in the southern part of the county for for generations. Because it shut down when? 60s or 70s? A Cecil County integrated its schools in the uh, mid-1960s. And, and so with that, uh, you know, before at the top of the 60s, there were African-American schoolhouses all around the county. You had them in Conowingo and Port Deposit and Elkton and uh, Northeast, and m most communities had them. This was uh, one of the last to close. In fact, it was one of the last two. The last two to close were in Elkton, where the Board of Education is right, today. Sure. It was the Elkton Central Office. And, uh, and, and the Cecilton School, Bishop Levi Coppin. And Coppin was a, a bishop in the church, so they had named it after him. Okay, so folks got together and talked about their memories of going to school in that building. Yeah, so uh, of course the, the community was really enthusiastic. Uh, uh, it, was, it was great, you know, from my standpoint, Rob, this is how I learn things, is listening to people. Right. And uh, to, to hear uh, something in the range of 20, 30 people come back. The, uh, 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 a former uh, principal in the school system was there. Uh, a couple of the children of teachers. Uh, the age ranged uh, from 50s to 60s to 80s, 90s. And uh, you, it, was, it was just a really good experience to hear them talk about what a tight little community they had as they uh, went through their their academic career and through their school years and graduated and then all these years later you know we're, we're out we're what, 40 almost 40 years away yeah they're talking about those memories and they, boy they had a great time so from my standpoint I learn a lot from listening to our elders to, to the to the community people that have had the experiences and it's a great little community too it's I, I actually grew up down there because my grandfather had a farm down there yeah did you know the schoolhouse that I'm talking about you go through the light and it was on the on the right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's down by where the Dollar General is now down in that yeah, right. area. And uh, they put in a, a senior uh, a senior housing complex in, in that area. And there was some discussion about to see if there were possibilities of saving it, but that never came through. But regardless, uh, you know, you, you, and that's the advantage. People should do this for their own family histories, Rob. Set up a camera. It's, it's, it's way too easy these days. You know, right. Set up a camera and, and record it. and. Uh, because these are fleeting moments in time that are going to be hard to reconstruct someday. Yes. We're doing something uh, similar right now with uh, Singerly Fire Company. It's called the Singerly Listening Station. So we're getting uh, together the old uh, volunteer firefighters, the 80 and 90 year olds, Rob, that joined the company in the 50s and 60s. 
and uh, get, setting them in front of a camera and telling their story. It's you know, I kinda, think that's I think that's a great. Yeah, thing. it's kind of one of the things we're trying to do more is capture more yeah. of these oral history things. Yeah, I think that's a great thing. Today, Mike, is a very special day, is it not, as far as commemorating? Yeah, today is no November 14th, 1963. And so President Kennedy was, was shot today, was assassinated today. And, and Rob, you look, in fact, this comes out of the oral histories mostly. You, you look back at uh, what was going on that afternoon in Elkton. Uh, I've talked to people and they'll say, you know, it was about 2.30 in the afternoon. We had on WSER, 1550 AM, right. that's the local radio station. They were playing the top 40 tunes, tunes, and the DJ was out there spinning the records. And when for most people, the first they heard about it was that a Elkton AM radio station interrupting with a news flash, just as Walter Con Cronkite was doing on the television and all the national works. And, and there were, here was this flash, President Kennedy was shot today in Dallas, Texas. Well, you know, from that moment on, Rob, the Eastern Shore, Cecil County, the nation. I mean, everybody changes. And, yes. and so the radio station uh, just you know, kept, the bulletins kept coming. We're in an age of electronic communications. Uh, in the Elkton Police Station blotter was, you know, you get a variety of ways you research things. So the police maintain a blotter. All it is is a day-to-day -day log of the calls that come in. Right. So I went and looked at their blotter to see what happened on November 14th, 1963. And in there, uh, uh, Officer Crawford entered 1.30 p.m. today, Dallas, uh, Dallas, Texas, Elkton, uh, President uh, Kennedy shot. Now, for him to stop in that police blotter and make that in there, because that's not the, in, enter that in the blotter, it's not the normal kind of thing you would do. And what else did I notice about it? So, it was a sleepier world in those days, Rob, but you know, they get a few calls each night, kids get in trouble, uh, somebody making a little noise at one of the taverns. Right. From the time he wrote that note in there. There wasn't one more call that whole night. And my guess is, and that, that was unusual, nothing big, but you know, a few calls for police service. My guess is, uh, you know, people even in the bar rooms and stuff, they were staying tuned to that TV and that radio station. Yeah, and in a state of shock. State of shock. And everybody, you know, it was like uniform. And you corrected me, Mike, because you told me it's the 14th. I kept thinking it was the 22nd. It's the 14th. It's the 22nd. Of 16th. And you, you, did I say the 14th? Yeah. Yeah, November So 22nd. I corrected the great Mike Dixon? You, Professor Mike, Mike Dixon? Yeah. And, Let me and, shake your hand. And, and to I'm gonna get some more smarts. <laughs> and to recover here, it was November 14th that Kennedy came to Cecil County. Oh, okay, that's what it was. I see. Exactly. You had that in the back of your mind. Yeah, I was a couple um, steps ahead of you. Had to be it, right? He uh, he dedicated I-95 eight days. Rob, I'll tell you what. You talk about a historical period in the community's history. So you got the November 14th. He's standing right up at the toll booth. He does two things. He dedicates the Northeastern Expressway, I-95. Right. That's November 14th. He's here about 22 minutes. He walks over to the center of the interstate. And if you look at it these days, now keep your eyes, if you're driving, keep your eyes on the road because it's right. busy out there. There's the Mason Dixon stone. Okay. It was the 200th anniversary. So he commemorated a, a stone for that. And then he flew off to New, he, he actually took a helicopter to Wilmington Airport and then he was off to New York. On November 22nd, uh, the new Kennedy's back on the front page of the Whig and the Democrat, the two local papers. This time it's about the assassination. And then on December 8th, 1963, so all these are 1963, span of less than 30 days, on a Sunday night, that Pan Am airliner crashes at the top of, uh, Iron, at top of uh, outside of Alton. Delancey Road. Delancey Road, yeah. So that's all like within a, what, three weeks span that all of this is occurring. Wow. That's a pretty heavy three-week span. Yeah, it was a pretty heavy three weeks, yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I can still remember that day that the president got shot, and uh, everyone was shocked. Everybody I was a little remember, kid, yeah. but everyone where, where was shocked. Where were you? I was in school. Yeah, so was I, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, but they, they let us go home early. Some kids, I hate to say it, some kids were happy about that, going home early. They didn't understand. They were so young. Yeah. yeah. You just knew they were going home early, but... The, the, I was shocked. My neighbors were shocked. Yeah, it was funny. I was talking to the folks that had Stanley's newsstand. Of course, in those days, most people read, you got the morning paper and the evening paper. They, they went over to the train station to wait for a special paper to come out of Baltimore. They, the papers were running off special editions. And it was like, oh, I don't know, by the time it got up to the tra Elkton train station about 6 o'clock. So the only place open downtown that night was the theater. So they took, them, they took their stack of papers over to the theater, 
and within a half hour or so, you know, read all about it, their entire stack was uh, was cleared out. That's where the uh, municipal building is now. That mm -hmm. kind of pinkish area. You could all see the marquee if you. Yeah, exactly. Back. Yeah. So you, if you can picture, you know, a newsboy standing out there hawking his papers, had been rushed up here by a, by a special train. What's the the other a couple other stories? Uh, the in Rising Sun, talked to some of the telephone operators, and they said the switchboard just lit up about in in that about that time in the afternoon. Can you connect me with uh, 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 Dad? He's down at the mill. Or can you uh, ring me through to my daughter out in California? They were still on the old. And that's the switchboard, the, the, yeah. the phone plugs. That, yeah. That's the name, phone plugs, going to the uh, Yeah, the I, I, one of the sockets. operators I talked to, and she was saying, you know, we, whenever the fire siren would blow, Rob, everybody, where's the fire? Where's the fire? She says, but I've never seen anything like this. She says the whole board just lit up, like, immediately. Mm -mm. You know, people wanted to call, find, get, find, check on the kids at school, or check on their husband at work, or you know, talk to a family member far away. You bring it all back, Mike. Yeah. I hope you bring it back again. All right. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks.